so Avengers Endgame the culmination of 22 movies in the 11 years of Marvel Cinematic Universe action has finally hit theaters. Pen Boy Does It Deliver It's three hours of pure unadulterated him truly epic comic book action and Marvel Studios really did pack a lot into those three hours so much was packed into it in fact that it was quite easy to miss a lot of those easter eggs callbacks nods and minor inclusions of the MCU is known for but never fear we've got your back. In this video we'll take you through things you might have missed in Avengers Endgame and be aware this one is definitely going to contain Endgame spoilers. Let's start with something that wasn't in Avengers Endgame that might seem strange but it's worth pointing out because four months in the build up to the movie fans were assuming that Tony Stark's binary augmented retro framing or barf God, I gotta work would in play a big part and they assumed so with good reason as it was seen written on a prop in a photograph from the movie set this first scene in 2016's Captain America Civil War but its absence on Endgame just proves that Marvel Studios likes to trick us we met you'd probably forgotten that it was strongly expected to appear in the movie. Avengers Endgame opened with a heartbreaking scene of Clint Barton's whole family turning to dust before his eyes on the Barton family's remote farm. Clint's wife is famously played by ER and Scooby-Doo star Linda Cardellini but less is known about the child actors who portray the couple's kids. It may come as a surprise to you therefore to learn that Ava Russo daughter of Endgame director Joe Russo played Clint's daughter Leela Barton. She was the girl Clint was training to use a bow and arrow in that opening scene. We first reintroduced to Thanos at the start of Avengers Endgame he was on the same farm we saw him on at the end of Avengers Infinity War which Nebula confirmed was a place called the Garden with his muddy golden armor acting as a scarecrow to protect his props the Mad Titan was wearing a humble rag which appeared to be a nod to his simple clothing at the end of the Infinity Gauntlet comic book arc called though not identical to what Thanos was wearing in the comics it was certainly similar enough to have quite obviously been influenced by it. When the surviving Avengers confronted Thanos the garden before Thor cut his hat off he also cut his hand off in case you've forgotten this is actually a recurring theme in the MCU with the purpose of it being an odd to Star Wars. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Likes of Bucky Barnes, Aldrich Killian, Ulysses Claw and Groot have all lost appendages in the franchise and in Avengers Endgame Thanos continued that theme in fact Bruce Banner also lost the use of his arm when he reversed the snap so that also continued continues the theme to a lesser extent. When Steve Rogers was running a sport group for survivors of the decimation director Joe Russo's cameo as the MCU first openly game at talking about his first date in five years was an easy one to spot but there was a less obvious cameo in that same scene in the form of Jim Starlin who was playing another participant in the group who asked Russo's character about his date Darlin is a comic book writer and artist who happens to be responsible for the creation of Thanos as well as Destroyer, Gamora and Shang-Chi. Fans have been speculating about how Paul Rudd Scott Lang would escape the quantum realm since he got stuck in there at the end of last year's Ant-Man in the Wasps and all was revealed in Avengers Endgame the quantum tunnel van that took him to the quantum realm in the first place had been sent to a storage facility in San Francisco where five years later a rat activated the tunnel by crawling over some buttons. The number of the specific clock of it was stored and was 616 a reference to the designated name of the main universe in Marvel's comic books. Speaking of that storage facility in San Francisco the security guard who let Scott Lang out of there was a well-known star in disguise none other than Ken Jeong his community co-star Yvette Nicole Brown also appeared in Avengers Endgame but her cameo was more easily identifiable she was in the elevator with Steve Rogers and Tony Stark back in the 1970s rather interestingly John's character was reading a collection of J.G. Ballard's short stories called Terminal Beach one of the stories but then that volume happened to be a little number called Endgame which is obvious no coincidence. In this year's Captain Marvel movie and indeed at the start of Avengers Endgame Brie Larson's Carol Danvers had shoulder length hair when Endgame jumps forward five years and we see Danvers talking to Natasha Romanoff from space via some kind holographic communication device she's clearly had a haircut which she's still rocking when she makes her grand entrance in the movie's epic final battle if you're not familiar with the comic books he might be interested to know that it's actually the signature look in the scene when Natasha was talking to the hologram of Carol 
Hollywood ad where she was also talking to Rocket Rodi Nebula and Okoye all of whom are reporting from their missions Okoye notably mentioned the fact that there had been a huge seismic activity on the ocean floor but her plan of action to deal with it was to do nothing because that wasn't their job could this have been a hint at the existence of Neymar we've already seen in Atlantis Easter Egg in 2010's Iron Man 2 maybe Okoye I didn't feel the need to deal with ocean issues because she knew Neymar would one of the coolest moments in Avengers and game came when Tony Stark arrived at the Avengers compound with the news that he figured out time travel he pulled up in his sports car and was greeted by Steve Rogers who Tony proceeded to surprise by returning his iconic vibranium shield to him which he'd taken in 2016's Captain America Civil War as he handed the shield over a familiar piece of music played in the background and that was the theme music from Captain America the first Avenger Cap's first solo outing in the MCU from back in 2011 Avengers and game revealed that the surviving Asgardians had set up a new home in Tonsberg, Norway called New Asgard Tongsberg has a history in the MCU it was the site of the Frost Giants defeat against Odin's armies as well as the town where the Red Skull found the Tesseract in the comics Asgard has floated above Oklahoma and in an alternate Marvel Comics universe New Asgard was the name of a version of Asgard that merged with New York City so this wasn't a new idea in fact it could lead to an adaptation of the epic Seed story at the start of Avengers Infinity War Tony Stark had mentioned that Ben and Jerry's had named a flavor of ice cream after him which Doctor Strange said was rather chalky prompting Wong to reveal that his favorite flavor was Hulk a Hulk burning fudge in Avengers Endgame and a scene showing some of the remaining Avengers sharing meals there was a shot of Bruce Banner diving into a massive tub of the desert showing that like Wong he too was a fan of the Hulk inspired creation. When Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, Bruce Banner and Scott Lang traveled back to 2012's Battle of New York we saw the aftermath of that iconic battle Rogers entered an elevator with the Hydra strike team in it including Brock Rumlow and Jack Rollins but rather than a repeat of the awesome elevator fight from 2014's Captain America the Winter Soldier he avoided conflict by whispering Hail Hydra into Jasper Sidwell's ear pretending to be a Hydra agent this was a fun nod to the Secret Empire comic book storyline when Rogers uttered the same phase to reveal he'd been a Hydra agent all along. While they were in New York the heroes altered the events that occurred there enabling Loki to escape with the Tesseract what you might not realize is that there could be repercussions to that in the main MCU Tony Stark said time travel rules aren't like back to the future so altering the past won't change the main timeline yet when Steve Rogers went back in time he aged within the main timeline essentially that Loki TV series could still end up taking place in the main MCU timeline. The Stan Lee cameo in Avengers Endgame which was likely his last one unless the late great comic book icon film one for Spider-Man Far From Home was particularly joyous it occurred in the 70s time jumped with Lee playing a de-aged hippie version of himself driving past the military base with a female friend proclaiming to them that they should make love not war on the back of his car was a bumper sticker that read enough said his second most famous catchphrase after Excelsior. The reason for that 70s time jump was so Tony Stark conceived Rogers could obtain both the Tesseract and some Pym particles in one fell swoop but given that Rogers would have been recognized at the place called the birthplace of Captain America he had to wear a disguise the disguise included a shirt with the word Roscoe on it which in the comic books was the name of the man who replaced Rogers as Captain America when the hero was going by the name Nomad. While he was at the military base in the 70s Steve Rogers distracted the young Hank Pym with the prank phone Call that made him leave his laboratory in a rush that allowed Rogers to sneak in and steal a few vials of pimp particles which would allow him and Tony Stark to return to the present when the camera panned around inside the lab just prior to Pym rushing out we retreated to the site of an early prototype Ant-Man helmet which just so happened to be the classic Silver Age Ant-Man helmet from the comic books. Tony Stark got the chat with his father about fatherhood in that same military base scene and as Howard got in his car at the end of the scene a certain actor made a very notable cameo it was James Darcy playing Jarvis Howard's loyal household butler reprising his role from the Agent Carter television series what was particularly notable about this cameo is that in making it Darcy became the first ever actor whose MCU debut was on the small screen to appear in an MCU movie 
The epic final battle in Avengers Endgame began with Steve Rogers, Tony Stark and Thor confronting Thanos outside the Avengers HQ and it didn't start too well for the trio. Thanos got the upper hand on the heroes even breaking Cap's shield in exactly the same way it was broken in Tony Stark's vision in 2015's Avengers Age of Ultron. Thanos also broke the shield in a similar fashion in the Infinity Gauntlet comic book arc when Rogers stood against him alone. In a movie crammed with epic moments arguably the most epic came when Captain America finally wielded Mjolnir in the MCU Thor's original weapon we'd seen him budget in Avengers Age of Ultron but most of us just assumed that that was its way of saying near the closest of being worthy out of everyone but however when he summoned it in Avengers Endgame Thor said I knew it which suggests he actually had been worthy all along and simply chose not to pick it up in Age of Ultron to make Thor feel better about himself. Avengers Infinity War had that cool scene in which Black Widow, Echo, EA and Scarlet Witch teamed up against Proximal Midnight but Avengers and Game went one better during the epic final battle Captain Marvel was trying to get the Infinity Gauntlet into Scott Lang's van with Spider-Man commenting on how difficult it would be what with Thanos' whole army in her way sharing Nebula Pepper Potts in her rescue armor Akoya Valkyrie Mantis Game or the Wasp and Scarlet Witch all joined forces to assist her which is surely a foreshadowing of an all-female MCU team move in the future. In last year's Ant-Man in the Wasp Hope Van Dyne smirked sarcastically when Scott Lang referred to Captain America as Cap suggesting he was great friends with the Avengers leader there was a funny nod to that scene in Avengers Endgame when Lang and Van Dyne were tasked with getting the quantum tunnel backline during the final battle Captain America gave them their instructions and Hope replied we're on it Cap which is followed by her and Scott Lang sharing a meaningful look followed by a smile. Tony Stark's funeral was a who's who of MCU stars with everyone from Mohanka Pam and Janet Van Dyne to Maria Hill and General Ross in attendance but there was also a teenage boy who you might not have realized was an MCU character we were introduced to back in 2013's Iron Man 3 Ty Simpkins Harley Keener Simpkins has changed dramatically so it was very easy to think who the heck was that in addition to the likes of Lila Barton and Cassie Lang Keener's presence and Endgame certainly seems to suggest that young Avengers seeds are being planted in the MCU. Following Tony Stark's funeral at the end of Avengers Endgame John Favreau's Happy Hogan one of Tony's best friends can be seen sitting with Tony's daughter Morgan outside the Stark family home Happy asks Morgan if she's hungry telling her he'll get her any food she wants when she asks for a cheeseburger Happy tells her how her father loved cheeseburgers which is actually a cool nod to the first Iron Man movie from 2008 if you recall when Tony Stark first arrived home after being held captive in Afghanistan the first thing he asked for was an American cheeseburger. Burger. Thor's future at the MCU was hinted at when Avengers and Game came to an end as he joined the Guardians of the Galaxy in their ship ready to head off into space for more cosmic adventures with Rocket Groot and company the God of Thunder made a pun calling the team the Asgardians of the Galaxy which is actually the name of a real team in Marvel's comic books the roster is very different in the comics Angela Thunder strikes Gurge the Destroyer and Thrid make up the team. This isn't something anyone would have been able to see in Avengers Endgame but it's a notable point that you probably missed you know how Steve Rogers went back in time to place all the Infinity Stones back in the exact places that they were taken from at that exact moment they were taken in the case of the Soul Stone that would mean taking it back to the exact moment it manifested on Vermeer which was immediately after Natasha Romanoff's death so rather horrifyingly Steve Rogers would have arrived on Vermeer to be greeted by the corpse of one of his best friends and his oldest father the Red Skull. Just before Steve Rogers went back in time he told Bucky Barnes not to do anything stupid in his absence. Bucky's humorous reply was to ask him how he could possibly do anything stupid when Steve was taking all the stupid with him. This was actually a cute callback to an exchange that took place in 2011's Captain America the first Avenger just before Steve met Abraham Earthstein for the first time. The only difference was that it was said in reverse with Bucky telling Steve not to do anything stupid and Steve firing back with the same way he retort. When Steve Rogers went back in time he was expected to return to the same spot in 5 seconds that didn't happen as Rogers opted to stay in the past with Peggy Carter but he did return and elderly Rogers who'd lived happily for more than 70 years with Peggy had made his way to a bench a few yards away where he handed Sam Wilson his shield and another nod to the comics he was wearing a tan jacket which appeared to be the same one he wore when he was still the skinny kid from Brooklyn and Captain America the first adventure.
at the end of Avengers Endgame we finally got to see Steve Rogers dancing with Peggy Carter it was a satisfying moment and a fitting end for Captain America's MCU or as the happy couple danced a song was playing that you might have recognized it was It's Been a Long Long Time which was featured in 2014's Captain America The Winter Soldier soundtrack the song features lyrics that are really appropriate for the situation and if you're interested the version that features an Endgame seemed to be the version with Kitty Callan on vocals and the Harry James Band. MCU movies are known for their post credit scenes and Avengers Endgame was expected to provide us with another however there wasn't one which really felt like Marvel Studios was trying to emphasize the end of an era but there was something a clanging noise could be heard which was actually the noise Tony Stark made when he forged his very first armor in 2008 Iron Man essentially the sound of the Big Bang that launched the MCU what it meant is anybody's guess it could just be a respectful nod or maybe it's hinting that we haven't really seen the last of Iron Man. Did you catch any of these things in Avengers Endgame? Did we miss anything that we should have included here? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to like share and subscribe to Media Hub Trailer for more great videos just like this one. Bye for now.